Hello, everyone. Hi, we are live. Um, this is the Pit Mad post mortem chat. Uh, one second. I, uh, all right, I had to mute another tab because it was playing in my ears. Okay, so uh, I just had the idea to do this about two hours ago. Um, and so that's kind of a not. <laughs> extremely well planned out, but I did want to do, uh, um, you know, a post mortem, just kind of give you guys an idea of what we saw today, um, the mistakes that we saw, the the things that work for people, and so today we are talking about PitMad, and so if you don't know anything about PitMad, if you just like stumbled on this video, you can learn more about PitMad at this website right here, and PitMad is a Twitter pitch event where unagented writers pitch their manuscripts um, in a tweet to literary agents and editors. Um, it is run by Pitch Wars, which is the organization that oversees the Pitch Wars event. So that's a little confusing because Pitch Wars is the name of the organization and Pitch Wars is also the name of one of the events that they run, but PitMad is another event that we run. And other than the fact that we run both of them, they really have nothing to do with each other. Um, so how I've been involved with PitMad, I am the current um, managing director for Pitch Wars. So I oversee Pitch Wars and PitMad. Um, but the last year I was a social media director for Pitch Wars, which meant that I oversaw PitMad primarily, uh, in addition to just running the Twitter account and Facebook account and everything. And so I have been overseeing PitMad events for about two years. And what it looks like whenever we work on that on the day of is we have a couple of volunteers who staff the Twitter account. And we have some of them who are there to answer questions that are sent to us via ads and DMs. And some people answer, uh, follow, the, follow the whole hashtag. So they just follow the Pitman hashtag and look for people who have questions or don't know what they're doing, or maybe people who are breaking the rules a little bit. So. Um, so that's what we do on PitMad Day. We do that for 12 hours. It goes from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we it started with just two of us doing it, and <laughs> that was too much. And so we added a third person, and that was all right. Um, but And then Brenda would give us, like, lunch breaks. Um, but this year we had, or this, I guess, quarter, we had six people, six volunteers manning the account, which was way better. I was joking. I got both a nap and... I got to eat lunch, so that was exciting. Um, so I just wanna thank the volunteers who helped us out today. Lee Marr, who's our social media director at Pitch Wars this year, um, she helps coordinate everything and she she helped me a lot when I first started out too. Uh, Kina Roberts, who's one of our Pitch Wars mentors. Uh, Brenda Drake, of course, she was there for a couple hours helping us out. She is the founder of Pitch Wars, if you don't know her. And AJ Sass, who's one of our Pitch Wars mentors this year. And then Michaela, um, I'm sorry, Michaela, if I say that your name wrong, it's Dominici, I think. Um, so that's all about Pitman. That's what we do. That's what we did today. Now we have a special guest that I want to bring on. And um, I will answer, I'll, we'll get to her first so that she can like go um, do whatever she was planning on doing tonight when I asked her to do this an hour ago. Um, and then I'll get to your questions that I can answer for you. So. Um, Without further ado, I am going to bring on literary agent Caitlin Johnson. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me, Sarah. And psh, you know, I totally had no plans tonight at all. <laughs> today, today was a pit mad day. I had some sushi. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Caitlin didn't want to be on video today because I, again, asked her an hour ago. So um, she, we're just get that lovely picture of her. Um, yeah, my good side, everyone. Not my <laughs> eight o'clock at night no makeup everything just no <laughs> yeah um yeah i when i decided to do it i definitely had to like take a shower real quick because i hadn't yet today um <laughs> so um when you when you're you've been doing you've been participating in pet mad for a while as a literary agent you've done it a couple of times right yeah i've done it quite a few times now yeah um so whenever you're going through can you like walk us through your process a little bit yeah, so normally I like start first thing in the morning just because 
it's a lot easier. I feel like to get, just get your coffee and sit down and just start scrolling. Um, and I just kind of go through it one by one, seeing what grabs me, seeing what doesn't. I post like my guidelines so people can actually know what the heck they're supposed to do if I like their stuff. Um, and like the later in the day it gets, then I have to go to my other work and I have to miss a bunch of it. And then later, later, later in the day, I do go back into the stacks. Like, don't feel like if we, if we missed you in the middle of the day, we're going to miss you completely because we do go back later. But I start searching for specific terms. Like right now I'm on a historical fiction kick. So I like went and searched Pit Mad with historical fiction and then middle grade and all that fun stuff. Um, we also have the interns in there right now. Um, so they will like copy a li the link of the tweets they find and they'll put it in our Slack channel and be like, you guys should go look at this one. This one's so cool. So a lot of my likes today were probably thanks to them. Well, that's cool. <laughs> it's nice to have a little extra help because that feed can get overwhelming. Um, just real quick, I'm gonna check the numbers on um, how many tweets we saw today. Oh, <laughs> I closed I closed the window, but um, the last time I looked, it was 179,000 tweets on PitMad today. Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> I did see all of you, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is why we have some of the rules that we do. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so when you're when you're browsing the the tag, like what what kind of things grab your eyes? What what kind of pitches are you looking for? Um, what what makes a good pitch, I guess? I really like the pitches that are kind of showing why it's a different story than all the rest. Like if it's a fantasy story about somebody escaping something and having this goal, I want to know what they are. Otherwise, it's just going to sound like your generic basic fantasy story. I did see some tweets out there today that I was like, okay, I kind of get it, but I don't get it because I don't have concrete details. So usually when they have very specific details that make it show what stands out, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for what makes it different than the other hundred queries of the same thing I have in there. Um, I know like today there were a bunch that just had this like awesome voice to them. There were a couple like, I don't know, there were a lot of water ones I liked today for some reason. <laughs> um, see, sometimes it's just words that jump out at you too. If I see mermaids, like I'm going to go look at it, even if it's maybe doesn't end up being something I liked, I'm going to go look at it because mermaid, like, no, um, I probably <laughs> go look at it. But so mostly it's just though what makes it unique. Um, cause if it's the same as everything else, doesn't show me anything special. Um, not going to really take time on it basically. Mm hmm especially because I have so many other things to read right now. I should not have been requesting as many as I did today. Oh, speaking of, you you made an announcement today. Do you want to share here? I did. Um, so today we got to announce that one of my clients, ZR Elor, who is an agent at Jennifer De Chiara, he is getting published in spring of 2021 um, for his YA Contemporary. And it's amazing. And it's called... <laughs> Best man win, and y'all should go add it on Goodreads because he's just, he's fabulous. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. Thank you. We're very excited. I know. You've, that's been a long time coming. For those of you who don't know, Caitlin actually lives in the city that I live in. So we um, sometimes hang out in real life, too. <laughs> yeah. Rarity. Oh, what are you? Sorry, my cat is not <laughs> over. All right. So, um, when when I'm looking when I'm looking on the hashtag, uh, I'm just kind of looking more like for the shape of tweets because if something's like outside of the norm, then it's something that I usually have to pay attention to. Um, so I don't get a lot to like read a lot of the pitches unless it just happens to be a slow hour. Um, but did you see any like trends today that you noticed? I did. I still saw a bunch of princesses. I feel like those just don't go away um, ever. Uh, I saw different twists on princesses, which was nice to see. Um, I feel like I saw a lot of dragons again, too. Um, I love dragons. As, as Zara will tell you. Um, trying to think. Oh, there were so many ghost stories. And I mean, I'm not saying that because like that's a bad thing. I was really excited to see the ghost stories. Um, I feel like these haunted ones, like from uh, The Haunting of Hill House, or is that what it was called? Um, mm -hmm. I feel like that like, spurted this giant wave of ghost stories now and i'm really excited to see that that was really fun to like realize and in middle grade there were a lot of ghost stories coming out um horror middle grade horror was a lot too 
Mm. Which is awesome. You never see that. And now all the editors want it. Cool. Um, middle grade. I'm a scaredy cat, but maybe I could read middle grade for. Well, I feel like it has to be kind of like still like R.L. Steiny, like Goosebumps. Yeah. And not the movie Goosebumps. If any of you are saying the movie Goosebumps, you can just shush. Just shush. <laughs> Um, I, we have like 50 viewers right now. So if any of you have questions for Caitlin, um, please feel free to drop those in the chat and I will go back and ask, answer like the general questions in a bit. Um, uh, I see a bunch of people are like up at 1am and I'm like, why? <laughs> Love <Yeah>. you, but <laughs> sleep. Um, so we do have a question, uh, from someone. They say, do the agents usually scan by hashtags? So you did talk about that a little bit, but. Yeah, I do sometimes. I don't start off with it just because like I said, I start really early in the morning, usually like right when it starts or when I finally, you know, make myself get up. Um, so I don't do that originally. I'll do it closer to the end of the day so I can see the majority of things that are out there. Um, and I don't miss a lot of them. Like I definitely did it for historical fiction today. Because in past contests, I haven't found a lot of historical fiction on these, and I was very upset. And this time, there were there were a lot more than I expected. Oh, yeah. sorry, sorry, cough there. Um, but yeah, there were a lot. So we definitely use them every now and then. We also use them if we're saturated in something. Like, say, I have eight clients, and seven of which are writing a fantasy right now. I'm probably not going to be liking a lot of fantasy tweets because I physically should not be taking more on because all of my clients are going to compete with each other. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we have a question from, oh, we have questions come in now they're going kind of fast. <laughs> I almost clicked on the wrong one. Okay, um, oh, I oh, hope Brenda <laughs> is, is saying, both you and I are both scaredy cats. Brenda um, just had a dental, procedure today so she didn't want to be on the video chat but oh no I hope, I hope everything went well yeah she's tuning in um all right Patricia says, gonna, hmm? hold on there is one thing I wanted to say because somebody was at the yeah. very beginning um you asked if you had to send them in tonight please do not rush yourself just just gonna say that I have people who have sent me requests like a month later it's totally fine just mention in your query that they liked your tweet and that's fine. Don't think you have to do it right now. Okay. Now I'm done. Yeah. What we usually, our official pet mad answer is um, if you can send within a week, that's, that's, that's fine. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Oh. <laughs> Someone says pit mad starts at 2 a.m. in Hawaii. Oof. Yeah. That's part of the reason why we do it for 12 hours because no matter where you live, you're probably going to have at least a little bit of time where you can tune in. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, Okay, so Patricia asks, is dystopian still a thing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. It's just specific to agent or editor. I know some editors still want it, but again, it has to be like really unique because it got so saturated so quickly when it did, when it was that big, big thing, when like Divergent and all that came out. Mm. So it has to be really, it has to be a very new concept. Um, Speaking for me personally, I don't find myself drawn to a lot of dystopians right now just because there are so many out there. But I do know some editors want them. So they're still trudging along. I just read um, Pitch Wars Mentors, Rob Hart's The Warehouse, which is an adult. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not really even sure of the genre, but I called it like an economic dystopian. <laughs> I have been seeing stuff like that. Like now yeah. there's branches of dystopian. All right, um, okay. Stryker says, hi, Caitlin. Do you think that middle horror, like Darren Shan stuff is too scary for kids? So I haven't read Darren, um, but I would say an, an agent or editor might be hesitant to take it on if it's like really gory, um, that kind of horror maybe. Um, I know everybody is kind of leaning toward things that are more kind of goosebumpsy. Um, I know I just took one, a, a ghost story. One of my clients is writing a ghost story and like, it's not gory. It, it does, you know, handle almost dying and witches and stuff, but I can't quite answer that just because I haven't read it. But I think as long as it's not stepping over some lines, you're still probably okay. But I unfortunately haven't read that now. Now I have something to add to my list. Well, maybe he will, he will comment and, and clarify in a bit. Um, 
Okay, so we already answered this question, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Katie Higgins asked, how soon after hitting the like button do you expect to see the subsequent query letter? We answered that. So a week, ideally, um, but no huge rush. Andrew, who was helping us out today on the Pit Mad feed, um, says congrats on ZR's book deal. Thanks and for all you do, Andrew. <laughs> um, Whitney says, thanks for doing this. Have you seen any trends in what genres have been requested? I think that's for you, because I can only speak to what I request. Yeah, um, well, that's true. Um, the ones that I was seeing most, but this may be because this is the sphere that I operate in so much, is I was seeing um, a lot of contemporary with YA with really strong hooks were getting requested. I agree with that. That's definitely in demand right now. So I know a lot of agents are looking for that. Um, but I don't pay as much attention to middle grade or um, adult. So, yeah, I know I was in middle grade and I was definitely looking at the fantasy and um, historical fiction. We're in a lot of historical fiction middle grades, which understandable. Those are hard. And then like paranormal, like ghost stories and stuff. AJ, um, he had sent me his notes. He said um, he was seeing fewer LGBT middle grade pitches than he would have liked. So I, I really like some of the middle grade ones in there. I, I got a bunch and I was like, all right, so I'm going to share it with our agency because like two of our agents couldn't be on the chat. They were on vacation. So I was liking a bunch of stuff that I knew they were going to like, but I also mm -hmm. like, so we might fight on them later. <laughs> you never know. Uh, all right. Brenda said, I tried to go on, but saw you had someone better. Brenda. There is no one better than you. Come and on. And you could totally still have jumped on and just get <laughs> um, Okay. Are you, this is for you, Jordan asks, are you more likely to like a pitch if you see another agent has liked it as well? Not necessarily. Um, especially if it's early in the morning, then I've probably beaten a lot of the agents there in the first place. Um, if it's something that I'm teetering on and I see a few agents that maybe I know personally, like I've gotten to know and I know their tastes, and I see that they've liked it, it may tilt me, but most likely I'm liking it just based on what I what I think I would love to sell or that I would love to read. Uh, okay. If YA is trending up, do you think middle grade is going this way? I'm not sure um, if this person means in terms of age or if you mean from age, no, because the ages really should. I know you. I know YA voice has definitely gone up. Um, it's definitely like everybody's older and <laughs> drenched in blood all the time. Um, middle grade for me, the on the other hand, though, if you mean trending up as in getting popular and having all of this, it's my personal belief, and I talk about this at conferences a lot. I think middle grade's the next frontier. I think there's so much we can still do with it and so much more we can trust kids with, especially now that we're finally, you know, not being stupid and taking in LGBT and all that kind of stuff. I personally think middle grade's like that next wave. It's my opinion. I want it to be anyway. Yeah, I definitely see a lot of people really, really wanting it, really requesting it, like agents and editors. Yes, it's, it's just, it's necessary. Uh, Katie asks, I keep saying Adia's the beautiful, which makes me think, are vampires coming back? Their potential. <laughs> I actually, no, I did request. I requested a vampire book the other day from the slush pile. Um, an intern found it for me and it actually was really, really um, interesting. I think vampires are, the door's opening again because I have had editors talking about it. I have had editors doing calls for it, but again, it has to be new. It has to be unique. Um, and I'm not saying as in like, if you have a POC vampire that has a similar plot to the old ones, then that, then it's out. That's not what I'm saying. The POC vampires and the POC monsters and all that kind of stuff, like they need a place too. So that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying like, as long as it's not the same old, same old, old white dude creeping in girl's window, vampire-y thing. And yes, yes, I am knocking on something. Um, then vampires are definitely kind of crawling back. Definitely. I think, yeah, vampires are super cyclic. Every, it always comes back. Yeah, like, I, and I love Buffy. I am a Buffy fanatic, but I don't see vampires like that right now at all. Like, they're just, you know, the typical obvious ones. 
Yeah. It's got to be something a little more um, depth to it. Okay. Uh, Patricia asks, do you represent graphic novels, Caitlin? Graphic, I do not, but we do have agents at Corvus Hero who do. Okay. I know Carissa is like very much looking for that right now. Yeah. And I think Courtney Price is also. Uh, so the question is how far along in development gra do graphic novels need to be? Uh, I think they've been sold. They've been sold on script alone before. Um, I would try to have like, I don't want to say 50% because that's a lot. I would try to have, you know, 10, 20% maybe planned out if you are the illustrator, but it definitely gets sold on the writing alone, like the script for it. Um, because a lot of publishers and houses will want to put their own illustrator into that and team up with you. So that'll just depend. Um, what editor? Trisha de Guzman is really looking for graphic novels to pair with writers and stuff like that. Oh, there was one other and I'm not remembering her. I'm sorry, but Trisha's amazing. So definitely like look her up and see what her style and like interests are because she's mm -hmm. interested in bringing writers together with illustrators. Um, yeah, what we usually uh, suggest in Pit Mad is to have the full script and some sample art available. And then if you want to pitch to Pitch Wars, um, we do require the full script and sample pages yeah, of that art. Sense. Yeah. Um, a lot of people want to know what's coming back. I think Mishana <laughs> also asks, is urban fantasy showing any sign of coming back? <laughs> Vampires. <laughs> I mean, I love urban fantasy. I still very much search I love for it urban too. fantasy. Um, I know like werewolves are on the decline still. Um, sh shifters are not. Shifters are a little bit more up there. Fairies and fae are going to go down again because of this new show. Um, Carnival Row, because Carnival Row is just amazing and done so well, it's going to be very hard for a book to compete with that for the next year, probably. Um, so I would assume that unless your fairy or fae is very, very strong and unique, and the unique's gonna be the word tonight, probably, um, those will go down. But vampires, I feel like are on the up. Shifters were um, at least a steady for me recently, and ghosts are on the up. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could add to that. There's too many creatures. Mm -hmm. um, so we did have a clarification from Stryker. He said, Shan's stuff is gory. Ah. I mean, it's not a no. There are some who want it. Um, I just know from the majority of ones that I've chatted with, horror, like more psychological or, again, goosebumps, stuff like that for middle grade. Um, I haven't been getting a lot of calls for gory horror. But then again, I don't represent horror. We have some people in our agency who are. Um, but I know that they have talked to some editors and we haven't gotten a lot of call for that. It's not a no. I would just do your research really carefully. Okay, Mackenzie asks, is getting an agent's attention so primary that profanity is okay in a pitch tweet? I probably wouldn't use profanity unless it's part of your character. Like if that's really your character voice, I guess I could see it, but again, the pitch is all about pitching. It's not about giving us a character sketch or anything like that. And it shouldn't be from like the point of view of your character. Um, it should be a legit like author pitching a work, giving us a hook or an elevator pitch. So you can, I don't really feel one way or the other about it. I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, I think if it fits the voice of the book, then it might work. Um, okay. Uh, Nikki asks, how long after Pitman officially ends, do agents continue to look for pitches? I usually don't do it more than a day after. Sometimes I can't make it on the day of, so I'll do it the next day. But I'm normally not doing it very long afterward just because there's so much to look through. And we usually try to set aside that day so that our workload isn't too big and I can like, specifically focus on it. So I'm usually not on it as much after the day or two after it. Yeah, that's usually what we see is most of it happens on the day of, and then there's a good chunk of it the day after. And then very rarely, depending on the agent, well, not very rarely, but rarely, depending on the agent, um, they might wait until the weekend. And it just depends what their schedule looks like. Yeah, I definitely see that, that sometimes we have to go to the weekend. Okay. Uh, I don't, do you, do you represent adult at all? 
Yes, I do select adult. Okay. I'm kind of picky, but yes. And I, well, I also know this is something Saritza cares about too. Um, is adult LGBTQIA for fantasy growing at all um, or just YA and middle grade? I think it's growing everywhere. I think editors are opening doors a little bit wider finally. I think they're realizing audiences want this and it should be reflecting real life. So I think it's growing in all sectors. I don't think it's just YA or middle grade at all. Yeah, I have been seeing more and more books being uh, given deals, deals and coming out in adult fantasy and science fiction with, um, if not main characters, then, um, you know, significant characters. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> we always get this question. Um, speaking of YA and middle grade aging up, I saw a lot of way that sounded more new adult. Do you think new adult will make a resurgence? I personally see a, a hole that publishers aren't catering to for college age people. For those of you who aren't aware who are watching, new adult is the age category. It's generally regarded as like 18 to 23, um, like college age, but not necessarily rooted in college. Yeah, new adult is very hard and it's frustrating <laughs> that it's so hard um, because it got pigeonholed into romance a while back. It got really yeah. pigeonholed into that. And so now whenever anybody hears new, new adult, they're like, oh, like first time having sex or something like that. And it's like it's about first experiences, but not just that. It's about like going to college for the first time. It's about getting your first job like outside of the house, not living with your parents anymore. Uh, it's like graduating college, like all of these things. And I want it to be something. I want it because we need college stories. And right now it looks more like it's an older character, like 19 or 20-ish, and it has crossover appeal. So it can appeal to YA audiences and it can appeal possibly to adult. And you kind of have to tell the editor which way it shifts. Because most, I don't know who is shooting fireworks down by me, but they are. Um, so if you can hear that, sorry. Um, but basically, it's about where they're going to put it in a bookshelf because we don't have new adult bookshelves, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. I agree, though. I think we need a whole overhaul of um, categorizing books. Um, and it needs to be kind of fixed up a little bit because right now we have significant holes in all ages. Yeah, I've been working on an article for a while that's like um, complaining about how new adult t didn't turn out into what I wanted it to be. <laughs> <laughs> Um, everybody. We all were disappointed that it just got like shoved into a corner. Yeah. Okay. So we have a question from Ethan that looks like he figured it out, but I did want to post it just because um, uh, anyone else who's watching, do we post questions in the chat or somewhere else? Yeah. So if you post them on the YouTube page of the chat, that's, that's what we're seeing. So if you ask questions, if you're watching this on Twitter, um, then, and you try to ask a question on Twitter, we won't see it. So just the YouTube ones. Um, so we have another question that you might have some insight into. If any editors retweet your pitch, um, is that of any importance to agents harding pitches? I would keep a list of all the editors who harded your pitches or retweeted them or whatever. Keep a list because if it's, you know, you can mention a couple of the names in your query. That definitely is helpful. Um, but also if an agent requests more pages, like a full, or they want to talk to you about the book and stuff, you can already tell them, Hey, I had this editor during this contest show interest in it. So we can chat with them and like have somebody lined up already. I've had people do that before. Um, and it was really great. Cause I just call the editor on the phone later and be like, Hey, so you like this, let's talk more about it and make sure it is actually something you want. So I would keep a list definitely and have it ready to talk about. Yeah, I did see when I was working today, um, a couple of editors who said that they don't take direct pitches, but if you get an agent, let them know I liked your pitch. And I mean, they wouldn't do that and they wouldn't take the time to go through the feed if they didn't really want it, if it didn't mean anything, you know? Um, okay, Jessica asked to Caitlin, do you as an industry professional enjoy participating in Pitmad? Oh, I love it. Like if I'm able, there have been a few times where I can't do it because I either have too much work or, well, usually it's just too much work. Um, but I really like it because it just gets you, It kind of, okay, so there's a lot of arguments for or against pitch contests. And I feel like it can't hurt you either way because at least you, you, you get seen maybe, maybe you don't because there's so many people out there. Um, 
but it helps me find some stuff that maybe isn't in my slush pile or is in my slush pile that I want to see sooner than like, rather than later. So I give a link personally that puts you in my contest pile. So you don't even like go into the general inbox. You go to my, my pit net or contest like area. You completely have an own, your own thing and it notifies me when you go in there. So for me, it's kind of a fast track to things I already know I might be particularly interested in and I don't have to wait to find them later. Um, the only thing I don't like about it obviously is because there's so much to go through and I miss so much or like another agent at Corvus Hero gets it before I do and then I have to meet them. And <laughs> <laughs> but I, I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I think it's a great skill set for uh, authors to have too because it's basically creating your elevator pit. Like it's really just helping you figure out what one to two, three sentence pitch that you could use on somebody at a conference. Yeah. yeah, I saw today Karen McManus was talking about when we had to do Pit Mad with 140 characters. Oh my God. <laughs> Those were the days, man. That was rough. Twitter days. <laughs> Y'all have no idea how good you have it now. <laughs> um, okay, uh, I, I'm i trying to scan through and I'm trying to get to the questions that seem to be for you so that I can answer the questions and so I can, you know, let you go and, and answer the rest of the Thank questions. Never. The boy is watching football, so I've got nothing better to do. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'll scroll back up and see. Um, well, so I'll say this. Um, some of the things that in general, I feel sometimes when I say these things, I'm like preaching to the choir because the people who are like watching this video probably aren't the ones doing this. But, um, the, the thing you can do to improve your chances the most is very simply just follow the submission guidelines, follow the guidelines. And they're, they're not that difficult, but so, so many people ignore them, or I don't know if they don't read them, they just see the other Pitman tweets and they just start joining in and they don't read them, or if they see them and they think that they don't have to follow them, I don't know. But um, it's very frustrating for us, and I know it can be very frustrating for agents, especially because, um, like I said, we saw 179,000 tweets today. Um, and we were asking people not to use the hashtag unless they were pitching directly. Um, and so, but so many people, and at some points it would be like one in five tweets would be people who weren't pitching, who were just commenting or, and it, I mean like it's lovely because people are like really supportive and trying to support each other and stuff. But at the same time, it's really frustrating because it clogs up the feed. And so even the most like positive comments, if you're using the hashtag, um, it can be it can be a problem because you're like clogging up the feed and you're you're just increasing yeah. the amount of stuff that people have to scroll through. Yeah, say as an agent, I only have time to get through a hundred tweets before I have to go back to work, and twenty of those are people spamming or people commenting on something, then I'm gonna get twenty queries that could or queries. Uh, pitches that could have been somebody else's work basically mm -hmm. and I did notice there were a lot of people in the feed this time that were asking what is pit med and I'm like yeah. look it up <laughs> you, you, it's it's that answer you know google is your friend yeah when Just, I um when I'm on the pitch words hashtag I'm like in customer service mode but the the slithering inside of me wants to send <laughs> let me google that for you links you know because I actually did this the other day. I went on a computer that wasn't mine and I logged and I, you know, was in a browser not logged in. And I Googled, what is Pitmap? And it's literally like the first result that comes up is yeah, you know, the like whole a whole um, And so if you could do that, that would help because then our uh, volunteers don't have to spend their time answering um, that question. Um, so you're the nice Slytherin, I'm a mean Slytherin. <laughs> I'm a full brother. Like, I will literally just tell it. Like, if somebody tweets at me sometimes, like, do you take uh, Urban Fantasy or something like that? And I'm just like, I'm not even going to answer you because it's direct <laughs> on my profile. I'm not even. Yeah. And well, our social media director now. Whoa, there's some weird sounds. Do y'all hear that? No. no. Okay. okay. Must have seen um our social media director now lee is like a hufflepuff and sometimes i start getting cranky and she's like okay you can take a break now um <laughs> she's like you can go <laughs> um 
All right, I'm scrolling through to see what questions I skipped. Um, let's see. I do it see he, mm -hmm. sorry, um, you do yours first. Okay, Julie said, it seems there were more agents looking for youth manuscripts today. Are there usually fewer agents looking for adult novels on PitMad? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, we do tend to see more young adult, more agents looking for young adult than adult. Um, but that is because uh, I think the agents who represent young adult are more active on Twitter than the ones who represent adult. Um, Cause that's just like the culture. And also Pitch Wars has had considerable success with some young adult titles um, like Children of Blood and Bone. And so a lot of the attention that we get from agents is from young adult agents for that reason as well. But there are quite a few agents on accepting adult too. Yeah, and a lot of us are doing both. So it looks like there's people more for YA, but we're actually like splitting our interests. And it would, again, depend on like what your list is. But, but I agree that a lot of the agents I know that e either primarily do adult or they've been agents longer, they're they're not, they have longer lists, so they don't really need to be in the feed a lot and they, they aren't requesting on through these contests as much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, the one I saw was, yeah. um, I don't know his name, but he was clarifying on the aging up thing. Oh, yeah. Trending up, he was talking about voice and ages for main characters. Mm -hmm. um, the ages really shouldn't change up, really. Um, there is upper and lower middle grade. So like upper middle grade goes from like 11 to 13. And 13 is that hazy area. 13 is like where nobody knows what the hell we're doing. Um, it depends on your voice and the themes that are in your, if they're gonna be more darker themes or dealing with things that kids like, it's more of a mature thing to them then it might go into YA as 13 year old. Um, but usually it's gonna be middle grade. And then lower middle grade is usually like eight to 10 or 11. Um, it's not as many words. It's, oh, what's the word I wanna use? It doesn't have that mature tone. It has not a simplistic tone, but it's just not as deep and involved, which is why usually there's fewer words because you don't need to be saying, you know, 10 things to say one thing. Yeah. Okay, we have a question that says, um, I was wondering if you had any tips on how to make a standout pitch or query, things to include especially, but also things to avoid. For a pitch, tell the main character, the opening situation, the conflict, and like the stakes at the end, basically. Those are the big things I say in a query too, because like, who is it? What are they doing? What do they face? What do they have to do? to draw us in by the end. Like pretty much, I know it's like a simplistic structure that really doesn't tell you much, but especially in the query, I always give like a paragraph to each of those, like character opening situation, next paragraph, the conflict they face, next paragraph, the stakes they face, and what's at risk if they fail or succeed with their goal. Those are the big ticket items I look for in my queries. If it's a lot of your, like obviously your pitch won't have your bio in it, please don't put your bio in it. Um, and don't fill it with like themes like this story talks about grief and depression and like that's awesome um, I want to learn that through the pages and when I call you to talk about your manuscript because it's awesome I don't need you to list out everything because if you have to list it for me Your pages aren't doing the, enough of a job good job basically to tell me that so those are the basics I want um, Make us care basically um, it can't be too surface level. We have to care about the character and what they're about to do or go through. It's hard to say these things. Yeah. Um, I had after, or right before the last pit mat, I actually put up a blog post um, about like different tips. And so that's the link for that. I'm gonna leave that out while I just kind of like summarize some of the things I said there. Um, and so let's, oh, sorry. I scrolled weirdly. Okay. Uh, so the thing that I was noticing, especially like we had a slower one earlier in the year. And so I was actually able to read a, like a lot of the pitches, um, uh, but they still go by super fast. So like when you're pitching on Twitter, you really need to grab them from the start. Like your first five words are like golden there. And so if those first five words are like really boring or like don't have any, anything exciting in them, it's kind of hard when you're reading them quickly to, to be grabbed by that pitch. 
Um, comp titles work great on pitch contests because you have so little space, but a lot of books don't pitch well with comp titles. So I think it just depends on your book. Uh, yeah, and in a pitch contest, they can take up a lot of your space. So they're not necessary, which is why every time you post, I know you're allowed, what, three, three. the whole day? Change up your posts. Um, do a shorter one that you can put comp titles into at one point um, because you don't want to waste too much space on every single tweet. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is, like, the you're twitching, you're pitching in a tweet, which is 280 characters, which, like, without hashtags, like, maybe 260 250 characters. Um, if you have like really vague or cliched phrases that are, you know, probably like 30, 40 characters long, then literally 20% of your pitch is a cliche. So in the, the shorter the pitch, the fewer vague or cliched phrases you're really allowed because um, specificity, spe that was <laughs> specificity. <laughs> Why can't I say that right? Is, is exciting and that's what gets us you know interested in it and so i always ask either these four questions or these three questions and you touched on them one is who's your main character two is what does does your main character want or need three what stands in the way of your main character getting what they want and need and what happens if they don't get what they want and need and then the other way to phrase that is who is the protagonist what choice do they face and what are the consequences of that choice um, and so if you want to read that whole um, blog post, you can you can go to that link right there and we'll go to the next question. Oh, we're getting more questions. Wow, this is this is a lot, guys. <laughs> um, OK, mm -hmm. I'm still scrolling through the ones that I scrolled through earlier, so it's gonna, it may take me a minute. Um, the one thing that we saw today while I'm scrolling is we saw a lot of people pitching and only using the pitmad hashtag and not using any of the age category hashtags, which is technically, if you read the rules required, you're supposed to have at least one, or you should have one age category hashtag. Um, and I feel like most agents are at the minimum searching with an age category hashtag. So you're, you're definitely gonna miss out on being seen uh, if you don't include that either hashtag A or hashtag MG or hashtag Y or YA or whatever it is. Yeah, because we're going to assume too, based on the pitch, if we assume it's adult, but it's actually YA, you may not get our like because either we're not looking for adult or we don't represent adult or something like that. Yeah. Because I know I sent one to one of our agents and she's like, this kind of seems adult. And I'm like, yeah, but I could see it maybe being an older YA, but there is no age. I think she still liked it, but yeah. we were we were questioning it. Yeah, but a lot of people are just using hashtag pitmad with nothing else. Um, and so make sure you use those hashtags because they're there for that reason. Uh, okay, Ethan asks, are there agents looking for fantasy, high fantasy with Native American influences? I think that's yes. I think we can just say yes. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, are agents thinking middle grade with OCD or PTSD story? Yes, send them <laughs> all to me. <laughs> Courtney, Courtney is definitely looking for them too. And Aaron, we have a lot of people at Corpus Era who want this stuff. Yeah. Um, hmm. I was only liked by two vanity presses. I, I did, this is something I really wanted to touch on. Um, if you got likes today, congratulations, first of all. Yay, celebrate. Um, but make sure you research every single person who liked your, your tweet because just because of the nature of Twitter, we can't control who is participating in Hitmad. And there are occasionally um, presses that are maybe predatory or um, like literary agents who kind of aren't. <laughs> Majors? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so make sure you research everyone who likes your pit before sending your stuff to them. A lot of people, um, we get tweets like in a couple of weeks or private or DMs, you know, on Twitter in a couple of weeks are like, oh, I submitted this to this um, company and now they want to publish me. Do you know anything about them? And you should be doing that research before you ever submit information Google, to them. Google first, ask later. I see somebody yeah. put that in the comments. Thank you. <laughs> um, and if they ask you for money, you should already run away. Yeah, for sure. 
I have a workshop that I do on avoiding publishing scams. I'm thinking about like serializing it on YouTube because I think it's just something that's so important. You should do it. I should talk to Meg about having you come on Publishable. Yeah. Um, okay. If I'm pitching to an agent in person, can I mention that they liked my pitch online? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> And use the same pitch, honestly. If you're doing a face-to-face -face pitch, do that tagline, and they it might even like trigger their memory, and they'd be like, oh, wait a minute, I yeah. liked it before. But yeah, definitely tell them that. Because again, like we liked it, but maybe we haven't read the pages yet. Like We, we want to know more about it. Yeah. And it gives you that kind of connection. For sure. Um, OK, what if an agent liked your pitch but didn't give instructions on how to submit? So there are a couple of different things you wanna do. First, you wanna make sure that they didn't give instructions, just scroll back through their tweets from the past like two days. Um, and if they really didn't put anything up there, they may have submission guidelines um, in their Twitter bio. And if they do, you can follow those and just make sure to include like PitMad in the subject line. If it's an email, some people use Mittable, so then obviously you don't have a subject line. Um, and that, but then the other thing you can do is you can just very politely tweet at them, say, hey, you liked my pitch. Um, how do I send my materials to you? Yeah, definitely go to their website too and see if they post anything on their profile because I know I post it everywhere and I still have people who don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Rather annoying. <laughs> I just wanted to put that as we do this. <laughs> I just wanted to put this one up. <laughs> yes, um, appreciate you. Okay, someone here heard the weird feedback that I had. Okay. Uh, Emily asks, Corvicero has a you queried one of us, you queried all of us policy. Does this apply to newly hired agents too? No, if they were not part of the agency when you first queried, you can go for it. Um, we have query manager, so it tells us when and who you subbed to. Um, just when we have query manager, not like if we you did the crazy, terrible inbox horde that was before to that time um but no if they're a new agent it's their free game because they weren't there for you to consider at first um we also really share like especially for pitman stuff we share a lot so you can definitely and if they requested it through a contest then that submission guideline goes out the window because they personally asked for it so you are you're good to go cool good to know yes I'm sending one of our agents one of your pitmans right now because somebody comped the Babadook and I know Aaron really. <laughs> I was commenting today. Um, uh, you commented on it. Someone said uh, Mary Poppins meets Doctor Who. Yes. It just really confused me because like I fully believe like it's fully embedded in my head canon that Mary Poppins is a Time Lord. She is. So She's just, been on the inside. Yeah. So I just didn't understand why why they would be so redundant. It's like Angel <laughs> meets Buffy, you know, it's in my head. <laughs> but then I realized, oh, that's not real. That's that's all in my head. Um, it's, I, it's real. It's canon. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I don't, Samantha, maybe some of the people in the comments can answer this question for you because I know I wasn't looking for picture books. Uh, it didn't seem like to me agents were actively looking for picture book writers. I, I've mean? noticed, yeah, picture book agents aren't on there as frequently. I've definitely noticed that. Um, I try to, like, because Marissa at our agency does picture books and so does Aaron, and I think Courtney does now too. I try to share them when I find really cute ones because I don't represent them, but they do. But yeah, I've noticed there aren't as many picture book agents on there as, as often. Yeah, I was just talking with some agents at a conference recently about this and it's it's just like a such a weird thing because um they really prefer people write picture books who either write a lot of picture books or write other things as well um just because the the sales are i guess small yeah they're small you need to be good cranking out a bunch if you really want to earn some money on it yeah independent in your opinion and experience what's the average number of likes that agents have walked away with over the years um, so I guess how many, how many pitches do you usually like when you're uh, participating in put ad? There is no answer to that. <laughs> I did not go in today thinking I would like as many as I did. Uh, I definitely went way over my estimated number today. <laughs> I was really blunt on that. Uh, I don't know. I lose count a lot. I don't actually keep count of them. I tried my first time doing it and I just very quickly forgot 
how many I requested. I know some agents try to keep it around like 10-ish, maybe. Just because you have to remember, then you're sending us pages and we have 10 people to read now. And if we like all of them and request the fulls for all of them, we have 10 books to then read. Yeah. So, but it varies. I mean, if my workload's high, I might not even go on the contest. If my workload's lo- workload is light, that's the word I was looking for, um, I could do a bunch. And, and then it just depends if they actually send them to me later. So, yeah. Yeah. So here's a tip that I used to do back in the 140 character days when I was pitching. Um, You can go to an agent's Twitter profile and then click on likes and you can see what they liked. Um, Yeah, (laughs) there you go. You can can not only see what they liked, but all or how many they liked, but what they liked. And so that was what I looked for back in the day is I would go to the agents I was interested in and seeing if they were at all interested in the kind of story that I was telling. That's a good tip. I like that. I'm really good at Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I Twitter great. I'm trying uh, to because I really kind of want to know, but then I, realize <laughs> I have a ton from non-related stuff. Mm, yeah. Okay. So um, will this stream be up? It would be great if it be kept up. Yeah. So it will be up. Um, so if you just go to my YouTube channel, Um, so it takes about an hour or two to process. Um, so it won't be up for like the first hour or two after we stop going, being live. But if you go, I'm typing it out right now so you guys can see it. Um, (laughs) if you go to my YouTube channel and click on videos and then you want to click on live because for some reason YouTube like separates out the uploaded videos versus live videos. Um, and so you can either click on all or click on live and you can see the um, all all the mentor video chats that we've been doing and then also um, this chat. So that will be available after um, maybe about an hour or two after we uh, are done tonight. Um, <laughs> Amy asks, do you prefer pitches with comps? They're they're OK. I, I don't really feel one way or the other because I, I think it's just as easy to have a good comp as it is to have a bad comp. Uh, I don't I don't try to judge you on that, really. I know some agents really like it because it helps us visualize it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But half the time, they're comps I don't know because yeah. <laughs> I can't read everything. Um, I think if, if you have great comps, then they can help. But a lot of people, either they just can't find ones that work or... Um, or they use Harry Potter. Yeah, well, I had mentioned in my blog post that a couple of years ago, we were seeing literally every science fiction person was saying it was Firefly meets something. And but what they meant by Firefly was like it's set in space, which isn't really what makes Firefly special. No, that's um, not really what I think of Firefly. Yeah. So. So, yeah, a lot of people are, um, use comps, I think, poorly. But like Mary Mancusi's Scorch series, she always says this. I've been on a couple of panels with her and she always says. Her, her book is um, Terminator, but with dragons. And that's just like perfect. Cause like, you know exactly what you're getting into there, right? It's also like different enough for the agent to stop and be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Katie asks, I saw a lot of bullet point style queries. Do these work better? I think she means pitches. Yeah, she pitches. put it right under it. Do these work better or worse than one or two full sentences? No. Oh yeah, she did say. <laughs> don't bullet point i mean f- there's there were a couple maybe like two i saw where it was a stylistic choice and it really worked with the voice but normally no yeah no yeah. i'm just gonna uh, like put my foot down and be like normally no that doesn't work yeah i think um it can it can work if it's an, a stylistic choice like you said but if it's just like a list of things in your book no Mm-mm. that's boring um, so I, a lot of people have questions about comp titles tonight. <laughs> so maybe we should talk a little bit about what makes a good comp title. We can totally do that. Yeah. And then we can just talk about it in general. And then that's, that's what we'll talk about for comp titles. So, um, the, the things for me though, is, uh, in general, like it's good if it's recent. So in the past two years, um, and also, if it's not a huge blockbuster, like 
<laughs> I, I saw one query one year that was like, it's Hunger Games meets Harry Potter. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> um, and because those one show you didn't read very widely in your genre, if that's the only like books that you can name in your genre. Um, and two, that you have unrealistic expectations, which is like mean to say, but it's true. It is true. There's also like, there's such huge titles that like there's a million different things it could relate to in your book. Like you say, it's Harry Potter. And I'm like, okay, is it the magical Hogwarts hidden world? Is it the magical creatures in it? Is it the boy who is orphaned and has to stand against the dark? Like there's a million things I could pull out of that story. Which is why if you use a title, sometimes I say, tell us if it's the voice of this title meets the action adventure of this title or the voice of this title meets the um, imagery of this title or something like that. Like give me little bits of, if you're gonna use two titles like that, tell me what is it actually about. Otherwise I'm just gonna be like, all right, that's a black hole. I have no idea what that means and moving on. Yeah. Um, I also had, we did a this query critique thing, Pitch Wars query critique thing at AWP when it was in Tampa. And this guy um, had, his comps were, his comp was James Joyce. And I was like, oh, do you have anything more recent, you know, that might work? And he was like, no, I haven't liked any of the books published in the past 30 years. <laughs> and I was like, uh, did you hear that? <laughs> you might not be right for the current market, you know? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we see that a lot where people are like, no, I like, I like the, the sci-fi from the fifties, you know? And like, it's like, well, that's, that's fine. Like if you're going to have an old title, you have to pair it with a new one too. Yeah. Something that's like not more than five to 10 years old, because then we get to see both sides of it, that it relates to now's market, but brings in some classic style, but you can't just say like, it's only old books or yeah. old movies or whatever. You can't just do that because that doesn't apply to the audience today. Yeah, I hear some people say don't use movies or TV, but I I kind of like it. I like it. I think it's still it's still a storytelling medium like Firefly. Like yeah, I would love for you to cast tell me it's Firefly. Yeah. Um, and like Buffy, I see that all the time and I love that. So like I think it's good. I think you still need to have a book at least. Like at least make sure books are more dominant probably. But I still think it's valid. And I've seen some people use like video game things like Zelda or something, which is interesting because I don't play video games at all. So I have no idea what they're talking about. But well, that's like, the risk you take, right? When exactly. Video game. Like Eric Smith knowing everything about that comp title. So like, I still think that you can branch out and you can kind of make it your own. All right. I think we covered comp titles pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do. I did see a couple of times today a comp title where it was abbreviated and I didn't know what the abbreviation stood for. Yeah, and that sucks because it does take up space by using a whole title. Yeah, especially like YA, we have a lot of really long titles. <laughs> like they both die at the end. That's like half your pitch right there. You know? yeah. And if you're going to do that, like just make sure your pitch is really good because if your pitch is really good, maybe I'll go look up that acronym. Mm. And, but I mean, I'm the person who doesn't really care about comp titles. So I'll probably just skip your comp title. Yeah. All right. Alexander says, I fell for one of those vanity press things when I was young. I thought paying to have your novel published was the norm. Oh, how naive I was. Just, um, yeah, just we're going to say that right now. Paying to have your novel published is not traditional publishing. Nope. It is, it is a valid option if that's what you want out of your publishing experience, but that is not. Um, and that's not the same thing as self-publishing either. Yeah. I like, don't think it is. Self-publishing is a very different money exchanging thing. All right. If you signed a writer for a middle grader, YA, et cetera, would you rep the occasional picture book? That is based on the agent. I don't represent a picture book, but like, if I like, I have a middle grade, I have middle grade clients. And if the bulk of their stuff was middle grade or whatever they were writing and only a couple titles like here and there was picture book, I could probably do it. I do know enough of editor, the editors that like, I would know who to go looking for and who to talk to, but I wouldn't do it if it was like their core, the majority of their work. And they threw in some YA or middle grade here and there. But if it was like one or two or just an occurrence, yeah, yeah. I, I could do that. 
I'm trying to get my honest ones actually published, so. Yeah, and I think whenever you're looking for an agent, that's something you can look at. Like, do they represent the majority of the categories that you want to write in? Because there, there are agents who rep YA middle grade and picture books. Yeah, and ask if they want to have a call with you to talk about your manuscript, like straight up ask them. Like, yeah. this is what you're asking to represent, but I also write this. Would you be willing to like represent both or do you only want this? Because you need to fit with whoever you're talking to. Yeah, my agent, um, she represents my young adult, but I also write adult romance under a different name. And I had been writing for a couple small presses. And so that was a conversation that we had very at the very beginning. Um, and we we decided that she would represent my young young adult, and then I would be responsible for my you know my adult pen name. Yeah. Um, and if there was something that I specifically wrote that I felt like would be good at a house that I needed an agent for, then she might consider um, taking it there. But that's not her area of expertise. So, um, but that's I mean that's perfect for us. That's like a perfect re arrangement. Um, speaking of comps, I saw <laughs> comping some old fairy tales that are currently considered slash viewed as problematic, like Beauty and the Beast and Sleeping Beauty. How dangerous would say comping these titles are? Well, there's a difference between using it as a comp title or saying it's a retelling of. There, those are different ways of using it. If it's a comp title, it may be weird. It may raise some questions. If it's a retelling, that's different because a lot of people are still looking for retelling. I personally think Beauty and the Beast has been mm, dragged through the mud quite a lot. Not dragged through the mud, um, just repeated, repeatedly. Um, and I hated Sleeping Beauty, so I don't know. But <laughs> sorry, I, I told you I'm Slytherin. Um, but I, if you're doing it as a retelling, like you've actually retold it and crafted a new story around it, say retelling. If you're just using a comp, like because maybe one of the characters is a beast from a curse and she has to, I don't know, change him. I don't like saying that because that's a plot point I don't like, but then that would be a comp. So then I would say, yes, it could be possibly dangerous. Um, it just depends what your story is. Yeah, and I, I do want to point out that in romance, Beauty and the Beast is actually a trope. Yes. Um, and so it's much more prevalent there. And um, but you can do things to like turn it on its head. Yeah, like uh, there's always the retelling that's subtle and deep enough. Like those are the ones I like where I have to dig and I finally realize it later on, like, oh crap, this is that story. Like yeah. but you made a whole new story. Those are the retellings I personally like. But yeah. I can speak for the industry. <laughs> Nikita asked about new adult, and but we're not going to rehash that again because we did talk about it earlier on. So just whenever um, this replays, make sure you go back and watch our conversation about that earlier. Um, <laughs> considering my pit mad today was a graphic novel, I have another graphic novel as a comp and also a critically acclaimed animation. <laughs> How in trouble am I? I don't think you're in trouble. That's only, it's only three years old is what you're saying, right? Yeah. I think that's perfectly fine. And then you use a critically acclaimed animation that somebody's probably gonna recognize. I think you're fine. Yeah, I think so too. Do pitches need to include the title of the story? Um, the For Pit Mad, no. Twitter pitches, usually we don't expect that. Yeah, in your query, yes. Pitch Mad, pitch uh, contests that aren't pitch wars, um, no. Yeah. I don't know about pitch wars, I forget. Yeah, pitch wars we put the title up, but it's been a long um, time. <laughs> I just listened to the print run podcast episode on on titles, so titles are <laughs> difficult. Mine always get changed anyway, so I don't care. <laughs> I've changed almost every single one of my clients' titles, to be honest. Yeah. Uh I've seen varying ranges for middle grade word counts. How many words do you recommend for a debut middle grade? Science fiction, fantasy, and otherwise. And I do want to point out, if you go to my website, which I mentioned earlier, sarahnicholas.com, on the sidebar, there's like a, a little thing of a couple articles for um, writers, and it does have a whole bunch of word count breakdowns. So we're not going to answer a whole bunch of word count questions because um, it's answered there. But I'll let Caitlin answer this. Yeah, for like lower middle grade, I say don't go below 22,000. 
I personally really don't like anything that's under 30,000. I'm more mature middle grade, like upper middle grade though. And so for like sci-fi fantasy, there should be a higher word count. I've seen word counts go higher, but I say try to stick to 60, 65,000 tops. If you go a little over, okay. Cause I know there was a pitch words title I offered on that it was like 72. I was gonna make her pare it down, but um, I would just the sweet spot for that is 60, 65. And just the sweet spot for lower middle grades, probably 30 to 40. Yep, yep. All right. Um, I'm going to cut off questions. So any questions are after asked after 9.05, we're not going to um, answer those. So we can both get um, to bed. <laughs> uh, okay. If a manuscript has significant revisions, would agents consider taking a resubmission? So if they've already declined. Yeah. If It depends. Some say no. Um, Sometimes when I reject something, I will tell them I'd be happy to look at it again if you revise it. Um, if it is literally like a whole new book, like you have completely gutted the thing, I don't see why not. Uh, it's completely new, so they're judging something completely new. But if it, you're still using like the same query, basically, probably not. But yeah. And if But if they do say they'd be happy to look at it again, that's a chance. I always try to say that anyway. Yeah, I think some some agent, every agent is a little bit different on that. Some agents have like really strict policies, like absolutely not. And, and some, unless they request it, but some agents um, are a little looser with it. So definitely read their submission guidelines because they probably mention it. Usually, yeah. Jessica asks, if two agents from the same agency like your pitch, what typically happens on your end? Street fight or? Oh, it's fight. Dance battle. Um, <laughs> Um, so what we do at Corvisiero is we say, pick the agent that you feel is the right fit for you. Um, and if it's not for them, they'll usually share it with the other person. You can just mention in your query, like that so-and-so also asks for it. Um, but yeah, usually they'll share it with the other person, but just go with the person that you think is the best match. Um, that's what I always say. Um, Corvisiero also does little dance gifts just for fun. But like Tori did that today. She, I had something in my box that she uh, asked for from Pitman. So I went and looked at it like right now. And I was like, this sounds like it's a better fit for Tara. So I sent it to her. Okay, last question. Nikki asks, speaking of titles, would a bad title in a query be enough to get a rejection? Or do agents expect this will change? I mean, I, I know it's going to change. Um, it may make me pause and chuckle. I have definitely stopped and just been like, what is that title? But I'm still going to read your query. Like, I'm not going to be like, nope, nope, nope. You just, you just ruined all chances. That's not going to happen. If an agent's doing that, that is a crotchety agent. <sighs> I don't know that I want to be friends with an agent. But no, I don't think your title's really going to hold you back that much. Yeah, I, um, I've never titled a book that I've published. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at titles. So, uh, all right. Well, thank you, Caitlin, for joining us. I'm going to stay on for a couple more minutes and um, do a couple of like real, like, you know, pit mad postmortem type statements. Um, but thank you, Caitlin, and have a good night, and I'll see you soon. You too. Bye, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Okay. So, I just wanted to cover a few things before I signed off for the night. Um, I did ask a couple of the moderators today what they wanted to make sure that I said on this. So I want to make sure I get to those. Um, we did We did want to say like PitMab is, is not for everyone and it doesn't work really for every book. Um, so a lot of books can't be pitched in 280 characters. It's, well, it's very, very difficult to pitch them in 280 characters. So um, just because you didn't see any interest today, it doesn't necessarily mean that your concept is bad or whatever. Sometimes it means that the format doesn't work for you. And sometimes it means that um, there were, I mean, there were 179,000 tweets today. So sometimes you just, it, the timing was a little off and that's just like look of the draw. Um, but it is entirely voluntary. So if it doesn't work for you or if it gives you anxiety, um, then you're, you're definitely welcome to, just watch and cheer on and not participate if it doesn't work for you. That's totally fine. Um, 
also, please, please, please follow the rules. We do um, have those rules for a good reason because it, we 179,000, I'm gonna keep saying that, that's how many tweets we saw today. And so for an agent, that's very difficult for them to navigate that feed if there's a whole bunch of people just um, you know, posting as much as they like, tweeting as much as they like. But then the other side of that is they're seeing you do that. So they know what the rules are. And so if they're interested in you, but they see that you cannot follow basic instructions, just think about they're signing on for a possibly lifetime business relationship with you. Um, and so they're not gonna really be all that hot to partner with someone who has demonstrated publicly that they are not willing to follow basic rules. And that's just, that's, uh, we talk about that when we talk about queries, but it's in Pitman too, it's very public. So um, make sure you're following those rules. And I did have a video. So if you go on my YouTube channel, I have a video showing you exactly how to participate in Pitman if you're like really confused about the basic rules. Um, and then we also have just, you know, the website, which is pitchwars.org slash Pitman. And I, it feels like I'm like harping on this too much, but it's because we see thousands and thousands of tweets in one day that don't follow those guidelines. So, uh, and it also helps our volunteers out a lot. Um, the, the, whenever we get new volunteers for PitMad, the first thing they always say is like, I had no idea how much work this was. Uh, and it is a lot of work and me and Lee do it um, almost every time and Brenda does it almost every time. But a lot of times the volunteers don't come back <laughs> because they didn't realize how much work it was. So um, if you could, whatever you can do to help, you know, alleviate that from for our volunteers would be much appreciated. Please, of course, be kind to our volunteers. Um, they are volunteers and they're literally just volunteering to sit in front of the computer all day to help you guys navigate PitMad. So um, please be nice to them. <laughs> uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about scheduling. Um, you're permitted to pitch each book three times a day. And uh, the number one reason a great pitch doesn't get a like is because the agent or editor doesn't happen to be looking at that time. So you don't want to post your pitches like three in a row real quick. Uh, you want to space them out so that you have more chance of getting more eyes on them. Um, I did see a couple people today just posting their three pitches, like one, two, three, and they're done. Um, yeah, do vary up your pitches. We talked about that a little bit. And some people will vary them up with just like one or two words. And I don't really think that's recommended because if your first pitch didn't catch any eye, then a slightly tweaked version of the same pitch probably won't catch someone's eye. So I always, whenever I am coaching people on developing Twitter pitches, I always have them start by developing pitches that sound completely different from one another and to go from there. Uh, just some real quick don'ts. Don't be negative about your work. Um, if you are always going to be the person who cares most about your book, which means that everyone else is going to care less about it than you do. So if you are negative about your work, if you say your book isn't any really good, then no one else, then people are going to believe you, you know, so no one else is going to be um, that interested in it if you who are supposed to be the champion of your own work don't realize or don't think your book is that good. Don't be negative about others' work. It's just kind of like a dick move. Um, don't be negative about the event agents, editors, um, anything like that. It's well, just don't be negative in general. I guess I could say because um, this is this is a an event where people are putting, you know, their books out into the world, and it's very stressful and it's very um, heartrending for them. So just any sort of negativity kind of brings down the whole spirit of the event. Uh, don't tag agents unless they specifically ask you to, of course. Um, if someone likes a tweet, we say, you know, likes are for agents. That's how they request. And that it's going to stay that way. We saw some chatter today about that. Um, that's how it's always been for since 2013. So we've been doing this for seven, six, seven years now. Um, and that's just going to how it's, it's going to stay because that's the easiest thing for the industry professionals to do. Uh, so, and, and they're already looking through so many tweets. We don't want to make this any more complicated for them than it has to be. Um, but if your friend or if someone likes a tweet, it's, it's okay. You don't have to ask them to unlike it. It's not going to affect that much. Um, just, you know, let it go, <laughs> let it go. Yeah. 
Um, all it's going to do is you're going to have that like, and, and that's fine. You just have to ignore it. So it's not a huge deal. Uh, don't use rhetorical questions. I definitely saw a couple of these today. They never work the way you think they're going to work. And they're a huge pet peeve of agents. Um, it's probably best not to use first person in your pitches. Uh, sometimes it comes off as creepy. Sometimes I can't tell if you're talking about your book or if you're talking about yourself and just using the hashtag. Um, so yeah, it's, not, it's usually best not to do that for the most part. Don't feed the trolls. We always get trolls in PitMad and they're just looking for attention. And so just ignore them. Um, we had, we had an issue today with someone who like refused to follow the rules and like yelled, you know, at our volunteers and stuff. Um, don't be that person. Obviously I feel like that's an obvious one though. Um, but if you see someone like that, they're, they're wanting attention. So just, you know, ignore them and starve them of the attention that they want. Don't introduce too many characters. It's a tweet. It's really hard to keep track of multiple characters. So you want to focus on the one or two main characters in your tweet pitches. Um, and also don't introduce familiar concepts. So um, one of the best examples I saw of this was someone had a book that had a time travel device that had this like fancy, you know, sci-fi name. Um, and in their pitch, they call it a time travel device because that's something that's easy to understand. You know what it is. Whereas if you use like your fancy name, we might not know what it is. And so it might confuse us when we're reading the pitch. Um, I just want to say, make sure you do your research. I mentioned it earlier, but if you got requests today, please, please, please do your research before submitting to anyone. We really want to make sure that you guys aren't um, being, you know, bamboozled by anyone who doesn't have your best intentions at heart. So I do have a, a blog post. So if you go to pitchwars.org slash pitmad uh, and you go to the resources on there, the second link on there is going to be a, a blog post about how to research literary agents and editors. So if you're not sure how to do that, make sure you go and check out that blog post. Uh, let's see. If you didn't receive any requests today, it's it's okay, I promise. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your book. We saw so many tweets today. And there's a lot of hay for agents to sort through to find a needle. So um, it's fine. Try try not to be hyper negative about it. If you need to take some time to like kind of chill off, chill out, cool off, that's totally fine. Um, and you know, if you say anything negative, it's always just a general rule best to do it in like private chat with your friends rather than online, because you don't want to be that person who is like harshing on everyone's buzz, you know? Um, but thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you all so much for participating in PitMad. Um, I, I always have a great time doing it. It's like a little, um, you know, stressful, but <laughs> I always have a lot of fun doing it. So, um, and I always like watching it. And so even if you're, you know, not really ready to participate next year, um, I always recommend just like checking it out and watching it because it's a good thing to see um, what stories are being written, what stories are being put out there and what agents are reacting to. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think that's it. If you are participating in Pitch Wars or if you're interested in participating in Pitch Wars, make sure you uh, go check out all the information about that on pitchwars.org. Um, so Pitch Wars is a mentoring organization where established writers and industry professionals mentor one writer and they do a full revision on their manuscripts and also help them prepare submission materials. And they end up being usually kind of like long-term mentors when it comes to business and that kind of thing. So definitely check it out. Um, the, <laughs> my light moved, uh, the, uh, uh, wish list, the mentor wish list, go live on September 11th, and then submissions open on September 25th. So make sure you check out all the info before you, um, you know, submit, so you know you know what you're getting into. And then also we have we have been doing some live video chats with the mentors. Uh, and so if you want to check the ones that we did already, you can go to this link bitly slash live. That is a uh, a playlist of all the mentor chats. And all the ones that we have coming up are we're going to be putting on that playlist as well. And uh, this 
uh, doing these mentor chats has gotten me kind of reinvigorated for video content. So I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Um, I have a new project that I'm going to be launching after uh, this mission's open. Um, so I hope you guys will subscribe and check that out because it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've talked to a lot of people about it and I've been developing it for a while and I'm not quite ready to tell you what it is yet, but it's going to be great for anyone who is interested in the book industry. So I'm going to put up just to close out the upcoming, uh, vi our video and Twitter chats that we have coming up for Pitch Wars Mentors. So make sure you check those out. Even if you're not participating in Pitch Wars, we often get a lot of really good like querying advice and writing advice in those, especially the video chats. So make sure you check those out. And I hope we will see you again for Pitch Wars. And uh, of course, unless you get an agent. Well, okay, first I hope you get an agent of Pit Madden. If you did not, then I hope we'll see you again for Pitch Wars and Pit Madden in the future. Thank you so much. Have a good night.